Hi everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be exploring Flask by creating class based views. Now if you work like with a framework such as Django, you all know that Django provides for us a generic way of creating our views. Now these are those functions that basically get HTTP requests and return HTTP responses. Normally in Flask you would create a view by defining a function that will basically dictate or state what happens when we go to a certain URL. Now in this case we are going to look at how we can use Flask to create generic class based views. So to begin I'm going to start by creating our application. So I have Flask already installed and I have my main app.py module right here in which I'm going to be writing all the code. So I'll begin by importing the Flask class. So I'll just start by saying from Flask we are going to import our flask and right after importing this flask class I am going to go ahead and create an app instance so the way I'll do that is by saying app in this case it's going to be called flask and then we shall provide an import name in this case it's going to be our dunder name and right after providing this dunder name now we can go ahead and create our first class based view so to do that I'm simply going to come at the top of our code and what I have to do in this case is to import our view class. So if we want to create a generic view, we shall need to inherit from the view class since all views actually inherit from this class. So I'll just come and say from flask dot views. In this case, we're going to import our view class. And right after importing this view class, we are simply going to go ahead and create a class. Now we're going to give this class a uh, name. So in this case, let me just call this the home view. And this is actually going to inherit from our view. And right after inheriting from our view, we need a method that's going to actually describe what will happen if we visit this specific view or if we go to the home page of our application. In this case, we're going to override the dispatch request function. So the dispatch request function is that specific function that handles a request in case we pro are to provide a response. If we are to provide a request and every all the things that occur within a view function are actually defined within the dispatch request function. So then we're going to do that is by saying dispatch and I'll say uh, this is going to actually be a dispatch request. So by using VS Code, I've been able to actually get the original dispatch request function right here. So if I override this, you see that what it returns is a response return value. The value that we actually return as a response when we carry out a request to a specific view function. Now I'll have to remove this. I'm not going to use any time pins for now. And what I have to do is to also uh, remove this super. So we're just going to dictate that each time we are on our home view, we're going to simply return a plain text response of hello world. Or actually, this actually return something more meaningful. So let's say we're going to, let's actually just return hello world for now. And when I provide hello world, I'm simply going to go ahead and attach this view, which is a class based view, to a URL. The other way we do that is by coming down I'm going to just come here and since we have our app instance we can go ahead and attach this view function to a URL so I'll just come and use the add URL rule method and this takes in the URL or the rule in this case so we shall just come here and provide the rule as slash and after doing that then you can also go ahead and provide the view function now in this case since we're not going to use a view function we are passing in a class based view so then we pass in a class based view. I'll just come and provide our home view. And since this is returned as a class, now we need a way to return it as a function. So this view class provides a method called a dot as view, which allows us to basically return these as functions. So I'll just come and call that dot as view function. And then within the dot as view function, I'll have to specify the name of that specific endpoint or the name of that function, just like we see each time we use function based views. Now in this case, I'll just come and say that our name is going to be index. I'll go ahead and save. And after saving this, I'm simply going to go and run our server. So I'm simply going to come uh, down here and say from if our name in this case is equal to 
main I'll simply run our app with app dot run it's actually going to be app dot run and for this case I'll just say debug equals true since we're just developing and then go ahead and save after saving this, I'm going to pull up my terminal right here. So I run our Python and then app.py. So this is going to run our app at localhost 8, I mean 5000. So I'll control and click this to go to our browser. So right now we see that argument of type function is not iterable. So let's actually see where that is happening. So we're going to come right in here. So we're actually saying if endpoint is not none and dot in endpoint, we're actually going to return this. So let's actually see where that error is. So what we have here is we haven't basically specified this. So I'll just come and say that we're going to have a view func as home view dot as view. Hope that is actually going to work. So our server is going to reload. And in this case, we see that our response is being returned as hello world. Now let's go ahead and try to render our template. So when I come right here, I can provide our template. So I'll create a new file, which is going to be found in templates and it will be called index.html. So once we have our index.html page, I can come to our app.py file right here. And all I have to do is to import our render template function. And after importing this render template function, I'm simply going to come right here. And all I have to do is to render our template. So I'll just come and say render template and then provide our index.html as the name of the file we want to return. So when I go to our localhost 8, I mean 5000, I'm going to refresh. And now we are returning a blank HTML page, which is actually working. So let's try to create a form in this index.html page. I'm simply going to come right here and all I have to do is to basically uh, create some boilerplate code and I'm going to create a simple form. So this form is going to be uh, for a post request and in this case let's say the action is going to be on the same URL. So I'll come, sorry for this, so I'll come and basically state that our URL is going to be the index URL. Remember, we use URL for within our templates, and that requires us to have the name of that specific endpoint. Now, I'm going to go to our index.html, and all I have to do is to provide URL. So, in this case, it's going to be URL4, and I'll provide our in endpoint name. Now, once we have our endpoint name, within our form, I'm simply going to create one field, which is going to be for the name. So I'm going to come and say input, and this input is going to be of type text. So we shall have our name in this case as a name, and I'll also give it an ID of name. Uh, we shall also have a submit button, and this is going to have a value of, let's say, send. So once we have this, when we go back to our page right here, when I refresh, we actually have a field as well as a button that sends. So let's try to send this. So I basically put in something here. And now we see that the method is not allowed for this requested URL. So when you go back to our code, how we can change that is by coming to our app.py. We can provide the methods that are actually present for a specific endpoint or present for a specific view function. Now the way we do that is by coming within the view function. And then we can come and provide methods. And this method is going to be a list of methods. Now we can provide our methods as get as well as post. Now when I go ahead and save this, when you go right back here and I try to send this, we now see that our request is being successful. However, it's not doing anything. So let me try to actually access the name as we've input it. So when you come right here, all we can do is to come. So I'm going to begin by importing our request object from Flask. So I'll just come and say from Flask, import our request object. And after importing our request object, now we shall come right here. I'm going to use that to access our method. So I'll just come and say if method equals, it's actually going to be request.method. And if that method is going to be equal to post, so shall have our request.method post, we are simply going to come and print our request.form. So within the request 
object we can also access the various attributes that are sent with our form for example in this case we only have the name and we can access the name as it is sent from this form so having done that let's actually see our form in action so i head over to our chrome i refresh and when you go back to our terminal right here we have that our name is an immutable multi dictionary that has a name and that name is a value that we provided before all right so let's go ahead and look at how we can also make this come out in a generic or actually let's say method based views so in this case we are actually dispatching a request by using uh, the dispatch request method however we can also implement those class based views that can instead help us to dispatch methods so in this case we actually have to define a method for let's say getting or posting or patching or putting or deleting uh, basing on the use case we have for that class based view so then we do that is by using the method view class or the method view and the method view is one that helps us to create class based views that help us to dispatch HTTP methods instead so in this case what I have to do is to go to the top of our code right here so I'm going to actually import our method view from flask.view so I'll just come and say from flask.view import our method view so we shall have to change this so let's say I wanted to change this function from our view function to our method view function so I'm going to come right here and I'll have to change this to method view and once you have that there's no need for us to specify the method so I'll have to remove this and if we have a get method we can actually specify the HTTP method so for example in this case I can come and say instead of dispatch request you can just come and change this to get and this will have to render our template now also instead of basically uh, stating that if the request dot method equals post we can just come right here and say def and post so this will take in self and once we have this we can basically do whatever is going to happen within our post request so i can come right here and all i have to do is to I remove this and let me fix this indentation so i can come right here and let's say redirect to the home page so i'll just come and say return i'm going to import our redirect so i'm going to import our redirect and our url for and after importing our url for i'm just going to come and say return redirect shall provide our url for and here i'm going to provide the name of our endpoint which is index all right so let's try to actually use this with our new class based view so when i come right here i'm going to try to refresh actually let me try to cancel let me just go back so right now we have our page so when you try to send it with this value we see that we are being redirected and what is actually happening within our request is actually printing what our form is submitting so let me go ahead and wind this video up uh, in this video we've been able to look at how we can use class-based views it has been a basic tutorial or video if you've liked this video please leave a like uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're new thank you for watching guys and see you in the next video bye